Good morning, Mike. How are you doing? I'm feeling very chipper today because uh, I feel already that uh, this kind of summer of discontent I'm quite looking forward to it, really, because I quite like a class war. I've been saying this all week, because um, the good guys always win. <laughs> I don't know summer whether it's affected moaning. you up there. The summer of moaning, it hasn't affected any of us up here whatsoever. Right. Though my sons are coming up to visit me, uh, so I've no doubt hear tales of woe as they queue at King's Cross for their one train and are packed onto it by by uh, scabs, yes. I suppose. But it's like yeah. that. But it's, the thing is, it's like that when there's no strike anyway, so it doesn't really it make is. any difference. Yes, <laughs> it is indeed. And you're absolutely right. It's having no effect because no bugger goes into work anymore. <laughs> I mean, that's absolutely right. You, I can't mean, bring a country, you can't bring a country to a standstill when it's already at a standstill. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, London traffic is so bad now, actually, that by having a, a strike of some kind, it's actually got better. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. So, we should urge them to continue. They should just well, keep it going. Yeah, absolutely. Keep same, it going. same with the teachers. I mean, the, the education of our children might improve dramatically uh, if the teachers all refuse to go to work. Well, it certainly would, because uh, uh, during uh, the COVID lockdown, when the teachers did absolutely nothing, as <laughs> we found out later, I homeschooled my daughter and yeah. uh, taught her about great British people, such as Sir Cecil Rhodes. And uh, and so on, right. uh, and it, it changed her education entirely, and she's now a, a fully functioning, uh, uh, thoughtful anti-liberal. Excellent. Um, yeah. Very glad to hear it. Well, I have to say, I've got to tell you a little anecdote from yesterday. I popped down to the House of Lords yesterday to have lunch with Claire Fox, uh, which was very illuminating in many ways. Not least, not least uh, because uh, it turns out you can't smoke on the terrace of the House of Lords because the Lib Dems have outlawed it. Not very <laughs> liberal or indeed democratic. We then walked down to the House of Commons terrace because she said, don't worry, we can have a fag down there. Uh, and we got down there only to be told by one of the um, very nice uh, waiters that Lindsay Hoyle has now outlawed peers going to the Commons balcony to have a cigarette. And I thought to myself, so this is what they actually do. They've banned smoking by peers on the House of Commons terrace. I mean, you know, no wonder they can't get anything done. Never mind the Bill of Rights. I, I used to, when I worked in the House of Commons, I used to, uh, I worked in the Shadow Cabinet Corridor for Neil Kinnock's Labour Party back oh, in yes. the 80s. And I, I used to go to the, uh, to the toilets for a fag. Um, uh, the shadow cabinet toilets for fact. And, and it, it taught me one invaluable lesson, which was that politicians never wash their hands after going to the lavatory unless they know you're watching. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the most signal thing I learned from my four years in that's, Parliament. That's quite illuminating, actually. It really it is. is yeah. Anyway, listen, let's talk about the matters at hand. Uh, you want to mention uh, um, uh, an honourable mention for Mr Sebastian Coe. He's in your column this morning. What's going on? Well, well, yes, uh, Sebastian Coe, who, who runs quite quickly, or did, to. Uh, as you probably remember, um, is now president of, the, uh, of World Athletics. <clears throat> so the top man uh, in the world for athletics. And he has come out and supported um, the uh, uh, various other organisations which have now said they're taking a much tougher line on transgender male athletes, i.e. men, uh, uh, competing against women in sporting events. Yes. Uh, so we have the swimmers, the swimming organisation, FINA, we've had the rugby league, we've had cycling, uh, and now, uh, at long last, we have World Athletics. And it, it just occurred to me, you know, Mr Nippy, Seb Coe, he must have known for five, ten years that it was an absurdity to have transgendered men racing against women. Yeah. He must have known that for ten years. But he said nothing. Mm. And none of them said anything. The rugby lot didn't say anything. The swimmers didn't say anything. It's only now, I think that we're getting to a point where there's a kind of avalanche on this issue that nobody, because I think they realise that virtually nobody in the country believes that it's right that men should compete against women no. in women's events. Nobody. Uh, but they were so terrified of the shrieking and bedwetting from the from the from the transgender lobbyists, yeah. not from transgender people, incidentally, no. but from their lobbyists, um, that they kept their gobs shut and went along. With, mm. You know, yeah. and it, it's it, it it's it's dispiriting. I, I tell you what, it reminded me of a bit. 
I don't know if you saw the story, you probably did, of, of the uh, the man who is called professionally a comedian, though some would have to differ uh, from that analysis, Joe Lyson. Oh, yes. Uh, who... Uh, I call him a stuntman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, if that's rhyming slang, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> but, but he's certainly the BBC's favourite favorite, uh, comedian, largely because he isn't funny and very left-wing. Yes. Uh, and uh, he performed the gig. Someone, uh, as you do these days, rang the police to complain about one of his jokes. Uh, and what happened was uh, the police uh, rang him up and asked him to put his joke in context. Now, the correct response to that is to say, get stuffed copper. Yes. If you want to know the context, buy a ticket and come and see me do it. Right. Otherwise, go and catch some burglars. You sack of meat with mittens. Yeah, because there's you know, a, that's about a million of them out there that you haven't caught. That's right. Uh, and it's this idea that we connive uh, with this rubbish, you know, as Joe Lyset did, and as Seb Co did for, for so many years, because we're scared of the opprobrium that will fall upon us if we don't do it. And, you know, this is why it's another issue. The Bill of Rights is very important. Yeah. Uh, but it's also important for individuals to, to make it absolutely clear that we will have no truck with any of this. Mm. And this goes for journalists as well. I, I notice whenever I refer to a transgendered uh, athlete, uh, a, a man who's transitioned into being a woman, uh, when I write for the newspapers, I always refer to him as a he. Yes. Because that is biologically what he is. And it is always changed. And it's changed because, again, the lobbyists have hammered away at the newspapers and made it clear that it's unacceptable. You know, so, so we've all got to stand up to this sort of stuff, Mike. Mm. Uh, I know you do every day on this programme. Yes. Well, this is it. I mean, I actually posed the question the other night whether um, um, Mr Lysette may have actually asked one of his mates to report him to the police to sell a few more tickets. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> it's, it's not a bad stunt. And it's, it's the kind of thing bad. that he would do. Because the only thing I would suggest is you report him for not being very funny. But I don't well, think, yeah, I I mean, don't think I, that's I, a I, crime I, at the moment. Well, you see, I, I could imagine going along to a Joe Lysett gig by mistake, perhaps, someone having told me it was someone good. Yeah. Uh, and then perhaps contacting trading standards afterwards. Yes. Uh, but, you know, you don't ring the police. And I mean, who? what the police should have done was prosecute the man who rang them for wasting police time. Yeah, that, you know, absolutely. Well, no, that's exactly right. And the police should, if they get a call like that, say, sorry, you seem to have made a uh, mistake. You've called the wrong organisation. Get lost. Stop wasting yeah. our time. Absolutely exactly. ridiculous. But exactly. speaking of the BBC, do you see um, that Ofcom have come out and said that 39% uh, of TV viewers believe the BBC is biased? That seems a very low figure to me. How, what percent was that, Mike? 39. No, well, it's, it's um, according to the Director General, it has been biased. Uh, well, exactly. So, uh, I, I don't think there's any doubt about it. And statistically, it's been proven in so many investigations into the BBC. But, you know, I heard a BBC programme yesterday uh, because it's about the only thing I can get on my radio up here uh, <laughs> in the afternoon. Uh, uh, it was the media show on oh, Radio yeah. 4. And there was a complacent, arrogant bloke, Ross Atkins. Oh, yeah, he's awful, Trump. isn't he? He's absolutely dreadful. Another public school boy yeah. uh, who, who came up with a series of facile objections to anything anyone said about the BBC, which was remotely critical uh, as if uh, as if the BBC were not to be criticised and he insisted that the BBC that there was a perception of bias in the BBC it's not a not a perception of no. bias you jackass <laughs> there is bias it's you know, and we know there is bias and you've worked I mean, there I mean you know that it's there absolutely and you know it's not as some rather crudely put it a left wing bias it's a liberal bias yeah you know and it, it's particularly uh, I don't know, I mean, take one issue, just one issue, such as abortion. If you have ever, ever seen a debate on the BBC which actually questions whether abortion is a good idea, or and you won't have done. No. It just doesn't exist. No. Uh, and similarly, they're biased on issues of immigration, uh, because they believe that anyone who believes in controlling immigration is a racist. Yeah. Um, they are uh, uh, biased on the issue of BLM, Biased on issue of gender rights and so on, yeah. you, you know. Yes. Biased on yes. issue of Israel, 
it, it, it's very, very straightforward. It goes on and on, yeah, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Stay where you are, Rod. We're just going to take a little break. We will be back with Rod Little, uh, Sun Collins, of course, Spectator Associate Editor as well. We've got to talk about Rwanda. We've got to talk about Boris Johnson. Much else besides. This is Talk TV.